Here's a card we have. This is a picture of um, John Wise while he was a football player at Oberlin College. Uh, so this is this picture is from around the late of uh, 1890. So you're giving this out at each uh, at each petition that you guys give away. Yep. So for every person that comes here, um, we are giving them a John Wise card, and um, there are different types of cards at the different stations. And if you collect five of these, you are able to win, um, or you're entered to win one of these um, prizes. So we just want to, you know, get people aware of the different movements that are going on from the overall event of celebrating Hawaiian um, independence to talking about Mauna Kea, to talking about honoring John Wise, to changing the name of Makili High School, and just to bring forth a lot of issues that are going on in our um, community and to just uh, celebrate Hawaiian independence. petition here today to um, restore the original name of McKinley High School. Um, in 1907 it was changed from Honolulu High School to uh, McKinley High to honor the, the President William McKinley. But he was the final say in um, illegally annexing uh, Hawaii. He passed a joint resolution but a joint resolution has no um, effect beyond a country's border so he couldn't um, he couldn't do that so he uh, passed the, the bill and it um, unilaterally annexed Hawaii so we're saying he shouldn't be honored and he shouldn't have the biggest school in Oahu to be named after him so that's what this petition is about.
Yeah, so this petition is trying to change the name of Bachman Lawn back to its um, original name of John Wise Field. So John Wise was the first collegiate football player to play um, football. Um, he played under the legendary coach, Coach um, Heisman, who's the um, Heisman Trophy is named after. Um, after John Wise came back home, he got um, involved in what was going on. Um, he got arrested for protesting the um, overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom um, and later he got involved with the um, territorial legislature where he became a um, territorial senator and what's really interesting and what a lot of people don't know is that John Wise co-sponsored a bill with Charles E. King that actually established the um, university so the university had a lot of um, influence from these um, Hawaiian legislatures. Um, following that he became the second professor of Hawaiian language um, and he even co-authored the first Hawaiian language textbook with Frank E. Um, Mithkiff. Um, so John Wise, you know, while he was here at the university, he had a lot of um, support for the athletics. So when John Wise died in 1937, um, they dedicated a football field um, and called it the Wise Field. Wise Field ran from where the current Bachman Hall um, Bachman Hall is now to where Cross Hall is. Um, but when Bachman Hall was constructed, um, the field kind of lost its name and the history went from there where a lot of people actually forgot that it was called Wise Field. Currently, um, according to a university map, the field doesn't have a name. So what we're trying to do is, is trying to honor John Wise and everything he has done for our Lahui, especially being that on the field there's the Ahu um, in regards to Mauna Kea and the Hawaiian language programs are one of the only programs that consistently use the field. Um, so we want to honor John Wise and to start having more of our um, Hawaiian names brought back on campus um, and the big idea is it doesn't cost anything to change the name of a field so you know that's why I started this um, petition and you know we just want to move it forward and give honor to John um, Wise. <laughs> Where's? That's my initial. Oh no, you put it in your stuff. Uh, oh. Nah, it's gonna give it some character. Yeah, there you go. How long you hold on? Um, put some good pressure down. Yeah, should be good. And then put some pressure here for right. your hand. I'm just gonna put your whole weight on it, like no joke. Just like stand on Stand on You've been working on black shirts. Yeah. <laughs>
Laku Oko'a, or Hawaiian Independence Day, I think has a, a great story to it. Um, Kauike Uli in, in June, I believe, of 1842 dispatched uh, three envoys um, led by the Hawaiian ambassador Timoteo Hotlilio. Um, and they basically traveled to the other side of the world. Um, it was a two-year diplomatic voyage um, in which they were uh, meeting with the heads of state from the United States, Belgium, um, England, um, France, um, and upon their, their, their return almost two years later in 1844, um, they had secured um, uh, what is known as the Anglo-French Proclamation or, or could, what could otherwise be known as the Hawaiian Treaty of Independence. Um, so from 1844 throughout the existence of the Hawaiian Kingdom, uh, that national that uh, that event was celebrated uh, through a national holiday. Um, today, uh, that history is being uh, revived uh, here at the university, and so um, uh, that I think is is going to be the our, our first annual uh, celebration of Lakuoko, and I hope many more to come. services for putting this together, giving us a chance to stand in front, in front of microphones. Um, it's always a good time. It's true, we've been doing this for a while. It's a, it's a real joy to sing. It's a joy to sing with someone else. You know, Hawaiians love to harmonize. And when that person is your own child, it makes you feel really good. Not only about the way you raise them, but also that they, they appreciate the same music that you do. So, I'm happy she so compelled to that you will sing along. But do be warned that, like I said, the poem is long, it's seven and a half minutes long, so if you stand up in the beginning and start singing this song, it's gonna be really awkward. So feel free to just sit, it's a song we usually stand to sing for, but feel free to sit, we'll sing it in its entirety at the end, and then you can do your kanaka duty and stand up. It's 1872, and David Klaakoba, not yet crowned, yet not yet anointed our king, hands a song at the request for commitment to fit. Oto Kapuaiwa, Hawaii Ponogi, a new national anthem, a new symbol of strength, a new promise to the Kanakamaoli Kulakau's generation, that like those before, they will stand and fight for their right to know all puni. Today, we call this resistance. Back then, we just called it Ponogi. Hawaii Ponogi, no, no. Like that. Kauni Keuli, Bellowing, Wamo Keo Aina, 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 Wamo
These next couple songs we're going to do are Mauna Kea songs. Um, and we do them out of uh, reverence for the Mauna, but also out of celebration for the recent uh, ruling from the Supreme Court. Uh, yes, give a hand to courts doing their job. Good lawyers, good little lawful people in the world. Wait, okay. Dad wrote it. I was just gonna give him credit. But whatever. So um, this is this is a song that I wrote. I was trying to I was trying to understand or, or get people to understand what about that mountain is, is sacred and why the telescopes are such alien things. And sometimes it's hard it's hard to express that unless you're willing to kind of personify yourself as the telescope. So this is a song that's taken from the perspective of the telescope. And don't worry, it's not that odd. It's, it's just that the mountain is so full of life and so full of spirit. And then to bring these inanimate objects, these artificial things, and plant them on the mountain, it makes me think sometimes that they must be my other place.
not really happy hour music. But I assure you, if you drink more beer, they sound faster. It sounds more happy. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure they sound happy. Probably not, but you're yeah. happier. Like Irish. You're happier to be here. Yeah, Irish shows. This is a song that was written in uh, 19, 1971 by Kiowa Beaver before there were any telescopes on that mountain. And as I've gotten older, I've come to realize what, a, what, a, what an amazing song is. And the reason it's amazing is because it is so simple. Beautiful. It's such a simple expression of love for that mountain. That, you know, I mean, you almost have to be from the Hawaii Island to really, really feel this. And, and the person who wrote it was from Waimea. So from Kalawala, from where their house and ranch was, uh, the Beamer grandchildren would look up and see this mountain every day. I mean, it was, it was never out of view. Even, even when the, the place was socked in with clouds, you could still see the outline of it. He doesn't mean this to alienate anyone who's not from Hawaii. No, I, I actually, I, I meant to do exactly that. <laughs> they're not from Hawaii, they Well, Maui, they got Haleakala, so they don't even get us this way. And it's a true thing that when you drive around, when you drive around um, Alamo Valley, and you come up on the other side of Makapu, and you're looking at the windward side, there is no more beautiful view on Earth. But no, still, this is about Mama K.
Yeah. Do you want to see Yeah. There's some chairs over there. Let me get some chairs. I haven't seen them. Hey, can I? Hang on. Like, Alright, so our people have been using music or words for hundreds of years to express not only our relationship to the land, not only our admiration for a chief, not only our love for each other, but in very difficult times, we have used our words to demand that people understand that we are still here. And we're not going anywhere. The lines belong to this land, this land belongs to us. We've said this, we've said this not just with our words, but with our bodies. We put our lives on the line. We have people go up to that mountain. We have people go over to Kalalabi when it was dangerous to do this. People have died and given their lives, given their careers, given their youth, in order to re remind people that the Kanaka Maori and the Aina, they are inseparable. And we've done this over and over and over again. And I am confident, looking at what we're seeing today, that it will continue long past the time, our time, and past your time as well. It is who we are. It is what we are. And so one of the songs that's given me a great deal of inspiration over all these years is that the song that was written by Eleanor Wright Pendergast in 1893, a song of protest against the evil men who helped dethrone the queen, who invited the United States into their <coughs> into their crime, who did all of those things, and then had the nerve to demand of every loyal Kanaka Maoli that either they sign an oath of allegiance to their government or they would lose their jobs. And it's a great story. The, the Royal Hawaiian Band got up in mass and quit. They walked off the job. They said, you take your job and stick it to They did. I mean, they didn't say it like that. They said it in Hawaiian, which is probably better. Uh, and we sing this song a little faster than we think it's fun. We hope you sing with us. We also sing it fast and angry because it's one of the few songs we sing that can be sang fast, so we use it to wake people up when we sing the
Sound check right there.